Hey everyone, it's Rich Warner from Consumer Math Personal Finance Guys. Glad you could be with me again. Today I'd like to do an example of an application of the future value formulas, which is useful to help solve some of the problems from the end of chapter four. Now, as you may recall, we did an example in a previous video dealing with the cost of a haircut that's appreciating in price over time due to inflation. We said that there was a 3% inflation rate and the price was increasing every year by 3%. And the question was, what is the price of a haircut five and 10 years from now? That's an application of the future value formula. So let's write out the future value formula again. It's um, FV for future value is equal to the present value multiplied by one plus some growth rate, which is assumed to be constant over time, raised to the T power, where T represents the number of periods going into the future. Now the period of time, T can be a year, it could be months, it could be weeks, it could be seconds in the case of uh, biological growth rates, let's say for fruit flies in a petri dish in a biology lab. But usually in the case of investing, you'll find that T is representing years of investment. So in our first example today, applying the future value formula, let's assume that we have an investment portfolio of some sort. Let's say we have grandparents, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Butterfield, and they're very excited about the fact that they have a new granddaughter, little Samantha Butterfield. And they wanna make a financial contribution to Samantha's uh, college education someday. So Samantha is currently a newborn baby. So she's practically age zero at this point. And they plan on Samantha matriculating into college 18 years from now. Okay, so if we draw out an x-axis here uh, for time, in years, and uh, we're starting out year zero, and we're assuming that Samantha matriculates into college 18 years from now, well then this would be like the halfway point nine years, and this is year zero. And let's say the grandparents, the Butterfields, are setting aside um, something like uh, $30,000 for their granddaughter's education. Okay, so we have here on this y-axis here, the uh, value of the portfolio. So let's call this the portfolio value, the investment portfolio value. That's our y-axis. And we're starting out at uh, 30,000, 30K. So our present value of this investment portfolio is 30K, $30,000. And the question is, what is the future value, assuming a conservative growth rate of, let's say 5% a year, 6% a year, let's say 5.5% a year. So let's say the investment portfolio is growing at 5.5% a year, and that'll be for 18 years, T equals 18. Okay, so this is a useful application of the future value formula. So if you remember your order of mathematics, we should always work the parentheses first. Next, we take care of the exponents. And finally, we do the multiplication. All right, so what is 1 plus 5.5%? Well, 5.5% is the same thing as 0.055. Okay, and to double check that, just take 5.5 and divide by 100, and you get 0 0.055, because remember that anything in front of a percentage sign means divide me by 100. So 5.5 divide me by 100 is equal to 0 0.055. Just use your calculator to verify that. Okay, so that plus one is 1.055. Now let's raise that to the 18. And finally, we multiply this exponent portion, multiply that by 30K, and that should give us our future value. Okay, so you're gonna need a scientific calculator 
to crunch this out here. 1.055 to the 18 power. That's x to the y. Some calculators have it written as x to the y in terms of the key that you need to, to press on. And some calculators have y to the x. It depends on the kind of calculator you have. In my case, my calculator says x to the y. So I'm just going to key in 1.055 x to the y and it prompts me for a caret sign. It's prompting me for the exponent, in this case 18. So I key in 18 and I hit equals. And this gives me 2.6214 and a bunch of numbers. Okay, I'm not going to write them all out, but it's 2.6214 something, something, something. Okay, so let's multiply that by 30k. You just multiply that by 30 and we get 78.64398k. And that's equal to uh, 78.6439k. Now you could write this as your answer, but it'd be nice to convert this to actual dollars and cents. Um, so to convert 78.6439K to regular dollars and cents, multiply this by 1,000 because K is representing $1,000. So 78.6439 times 1,000 is equal to um, a future value of 78,000 six hundred forty three dollars and nine eight seven let's round that up to nine nine cents so seventy eight thousand six hundred forty three dollars and ninety nine cents that's the future value okay remember we started out at thirty thousand in year zero well this portfolio will go up to um 78,640, almost 644 dollars. That's 78.64K. Uh, Let me erase this so I can show you graphically what I'm trying to get at here. So we said that we started out with $30,000 in year zero and we end up with 78.64K. 78.64K in 18 years from now okay and that's an incredible growth as you can imagine but let's say we keyed in you know t equals one t equals two three etc four five six seven eight nine all the way out to 18 years if we keyed in the values for t and you can use an excel spreadsheet to do this if you like what you'll notice is you'll start to get a curve that looks like this and um, if we were to keep going past year 18, uh, the curve will get steeper and steeper and steeper the farther out we go in time. And that's the nature of the exponent part of this future value formula. Notice that in the early years, you have a pretty flat, almost lifeless profit curve here or portfolio investment value curve. But as you start moving out in time, notice that the slope of this curve starts to steepen, okay? We start getting a steeper and steeper curve. And this is the nature of exponential growth. The future value formula is telling us that due to the growth on growth portion, okay, the interest and dividends, as well as the capital gains, that are reinvested into the portfolio, every year you're getting that much more growth on the original investment. Whenever I teach students about the future value formula, I always like to use the analogy of a snowball that is rolling down a mountain. Let's say you're at the top of Mount Everest and the snow is packing pretty good and you start rolling a small snowball down the top of Mount Everest. What do you think is going to happen over time to that snowball? 
as you're rolling it down the mountain, it starts to pick up snow. And the size of the snowball starts to increase. And the interesting thing is that if you continue rolling it down the mountain, it'll start to pick up mass. It'll start to grow faster and faster. And because it's getting bigger and bigger over time, it's picking up snow at a faster and faster rate. So the longer you push this snowball down the mountain, the bigger it gets and the more snow it accumulates, as opposed to at the very beginning when you just started rolling this small little snowball down the mountain. That is the concept of growth on growth in an investment portfolio elucidated to the best of my ability. Okay, This is growth on growth, and that is a powerful concept when investing for a child's education as well as for your own retirement portfolio. If you can get 5.5%, remember, five, six, seven percent, call it, uh, you know, if you can get seven percent in your investment portfolio, which is not unheard of, okay, historically based on the returns from the stock market, as well as from investment grade bonds, you can get six, seven, eight percent a year, which is not necessarily asking for too much. That's a pretty conservative return, even five, six, seven percent. It doesn't matter. The key thing is this, the number of years that you're rolling this snowball down the mountain. The more years you have given yourself to investing in a conservative investment portfolio, the better off you'll be, the steeper this growth curve will become. Okay. In a later part of this course, I'm going to go into this concept in greater detail and you'll see the numbers in a spreadsheet that I designed to show you about this. And what you want to do is invest your retirement savings account in something known as an IRA or a 401k. Okay, you've probably heard of 401ks. Well, an IRA is the individual version of a 401k. 401ks are set up through companies that you work for. IRAs can be set up by anyone who is generating earnings. Doesn't matter if you work at a company or not. Anyone can set up an IRA. The really cool thing about IRAs is that the growth inside the portfolio is tax free. You will never have to pay taxes when you retire, withdrawing all the growth that you've experienced inside of an IRA. I'm talking about the Roth IRA in particular, not the taxable IRA version. I'm talking about the Roth IRA which allows you to get compound growth, growth on growth without being taxed. A very powerful concept for your retirement. Okay, next I'd like to talk about situations where the growth rate when using the future value formula can actually be negative, okay? We don't always have to deal with an exponential growth curve such as this in the case of an investment portfolio, for example. We could be dealing with a situation, let's say, with a depreciating asset. As you're probably aware, consumer electronics goods like computers, uh, cell phones, and the like all depreciate over time. Over time, they actually lose value because the technology is constantly getting better and better, not to mention the fact that, you know, the more you use an item, the more wear and tear you experience and that also depreciates the value of the item as well. But it's primarily due to the fact that, you know, with every passing year, new technologies are coming to the fore and uh, making your old cell phone less and less value and attractive. The same holds true for cars particularly, which is what I want to talk about in this next example. Everyone pretty much is aware of the fact that, you know, when you drive a new car off the lot, uh, you know, you lose about $2,000 right off the bat. Um, that's the way it is with new cars. But uh, cars do depreciate just like electronics goods uh, over time. And when we're talking about depreciating assets, this R% growth rate is actually negative. So in the case of cars, 
the average negative growth rate for cars is minus 14% a year. Now that's, that's an average, okay? It varies from the start to the finish, but the average depreciation of a car is gonna be about 14% a year. So let's say you bought this car and it's, uh, let's say uh, $40,000 off the lot, okay? Right, it's a new car, you, it's about $40,000 new. And what you'll see in year zero, as time progresses, uh, you know, you're starting here. What you notice is that it starts to depreciate in value pretty fast. And the question may be like, you know, how much is this car worth in 10 years from now? It's, uh, it's new value once again is 40,000. And in 10 years, the question is, you know, how much is it worth? Well, we could apply the future value formula to answer that. All you have to do is plug in the numbers. Okay, so the present value we said, you know, in year zero, let's say you purchased the car at the, at the dealer, it's a new car, um, so that's uh, 40K. Multiply that by one minus 14% depreciation per year, and we like to know what it's worth 10 years from now, so that's T equals 10. Let me just erase this little bit here so you can see it better. So the future value of this car in year 10 is equal to 40,000. Present value is the starting price uh, multiplied by one minus 14% uh, negative growth rate 10 years from now, T equals 10. So the first thing we have to do is to work the parentheses, order of mathematics, one minus uh, 0 0.14, is the same thing as 0 0.86. Raise that to the 10th power and multiply that by $40,000 and we should get our future value. Okay, so this is the only hairy part really. We take our scientific calculators and uh, we key in 0 0.86 x to the y raised to the 10th power, and we get um, 0 0.2213 about. Multiply that by 40,000. Multiply that by 40,000, and we get 8.852k. Uh, once again, K stands for 1,000. If you want to convert this into dollars and cents, just multiply 8.852 times 1,000, and you get um, a future value uh, here is going to be uh, $8,852.06. Call it just call it uh, $8,852. So this is the projected price, the future value of this automobile that's depreciating at 14% a year for 10 years. 8,000, almost $8,900 from a starting price of $40,000. The key thing to keep in mind about the future value formula is that it's an exponential, almost hyperbolic type of progression. It's a growth curve that either can escalate and be, grows faster and faster, or it declines really fast and levels out, as we see in the case of depreciation on a car. Okay, so as you can see, the future value formula is very important for helping to project valuations into the future. That wraps it up for this segment. In our next segment, we'll review the final questions from the end of chapter four here, questions 11 through 15. I hope you'll join me for that. That should be very interesting. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to work backwards using the markup formula and the discount formula. Thanks so much for watching. This is Rich Warner again for Consumer Math Personal Finance class. Hope to see you in the next video.